Hi, welcome to Branching Out. I'm gonna take a little tour today. I'm gonna to show you all the trees that started to blossom and show me some fruit sets. And uh, I also wanna get down there and show you my has caps because they're starting to turn blue and I haven't had one yet. So I definitely wanna try to taste test that for you. And uh, let's get on it. All right, so we'll just start up here at the beginning. These are my very first trees I put in before I started doing permaculture. This is an apricot, which seems to be all doing okay here so far. Um, but then this one here was doing okay too, but then all of a sudden it just decided it wanted to, looks like it's dying. So, you know, I don't think it has really well good drainage and I'm pretty sure apricots need good drainage. Um, but we'll see I have a few other apricots that are also not agreeing with me either so let's just go over here to these I believe these are the uh, peaches and they've plumed out a lot better and as you can see I don't have a lot of signs of the curl the peach leaf curl so I'm gonna leave that uh, one of those as my links at the end there you can just uh, punch online if you want to check out how you help prevent peach leaf curl which you use on your nectarines. I probably should have used some on my apricots too, but I, I kind of skipped them. Now this is my other peach. Now these ones are about a year and a half old, but this one here has fruit sets. You can see, now whether I keep the fruit on there, whether it stays on there or, uh, or not, it's up to nature. Hopefully it doesn't drop the fruit, but yeah, I can't wait to try some kind of fruit on my trees. So that's uh, the other peach. And now we'll go over to the nectarines here. It's our new trailer. So, as you can see, I don't really see any fruit sets on this one, but it definitely, again, the peach leaf curl. No peach leaf curl. A couple of yellow leaves here, no big deal. I'll just take them off. And this one here has always kind of struggled a little bit, but again, uh, well, I got a little bit of little curl there a little bit maybe um, but it's, it's doing okay so far so good well hopefully it keeps going so this pairs up by my mill here it's just to the right of my greenhouse so I did a lot a big major prune to the bottom now uh, probably wasn't my best prune job but these big branches were not growing properly so some of these sprouts, I'm going to let these water sprouts kind of grow. Hopefully I can get a branch out to that side, to the sunnier side. But all in all, she's in good healthy shape. She's doing well. Um, I can't see any fruit sets from here. But we'll see. But I definitely, yep, there's definitely some fruit sets right up in there, up on the, the branches there. So, and then right here, a whole bunch of wild raspberries were growing. So I've been slowly grabbing them out, you know, from one of my other videos there, I've uh, been transplanting them over to my mounds. So I just kind of slowly took out what I could. The best ones, there's still some here, you can see this one right here, is a, this a raspberry right there, big wild raspberry. So I like taking them out in clusters like that if I can. But I find that taking stuff from the wild is so much better because it knows how to grow itself. Whereas I'm an amateur, but yeah, I put them over here, and uh, hopefully they keep going. But I've definitely beefed up this this little what you call guild, raspberry guild, and hoping it does it okay. Looks like it needs a. I wish it did kind of rain last night when I plant. I wish it did. And let's get down to the has caps. So this is my Hazcap Guild here, and I did lose one over the winter, but you can see they all have these nice little berries growing on them, you see, but I had to put the netting on it so the birds, because as soon as they turn purple, the birds will just gobble them right up. So it's funny because my smallest bush, this is my one of my bigger bushes, it's growing some nice berries in there, you can see. And then over here, I see I got a purple one right there. Can you see that on the camera? I don't know if you can even see that. It's right here. It's right there. So it's 
switch this around. Yeah, okay, so I was able to get one. It's a little green on the end, but I'm gonna try it anyways because it's the only one I have left. Um, they are producing pretty good, but I think I need another week and then they'll really start coming in, especially the blueberries will be coming up soon too as well. So let's give it a try. Oh, that one's a little sour, but I'm gonna tell you I cheated. I did just have one, but I had to change out my video because uh, my brother had come up in the, uh, the quad runner. So uh, when I did the first one, it was the same thing. It was a little tart. Uh, it tastes like when you eat a wild raspberry, that tartness, not the same flavor. It does taste, I would think it tastes closer to a plum, really. Like the plum skin. But they're delicious. Uh, I really do believe they're going to make a really good jam. So let's get on to uh, some of the other stuff here. And right beside my other little uh, Hazcap uh, guild right here. And I'm going to flip the camera around. So this is where I'm at the other Hazcap guild, which is down, down by my grape guild. And I'm over here by this apple tree. I forget which apple it is. I have to check the label because I always forget. Um, but you can see this thing has apples all over the place. All over. It's just everywhere on this one. I thought it would be a little later before we started seeing fruit sets. But I cannot remember what tree, what kind of apple that is. I'll have to get back to you on that one. But uh, yeah, let's just keep moving on. I got, uh, obviously I got my tomatoes in. I still have some seeds that we put in some seeds we we did uh, round two of planting this weekend as well we'll get to that this is my nectarine here which also has a lot of fruit set in there you can see these fruit sets i think they'll just fall off we'll see we'll see if they keep going um obviously i told you about my apple that died the elderberry's doing okay no berries on it yet so on and so forth. Uh, my apricots are all struggling. I think it's just too wet a ground here for them. Um, there's even some fruit sets. There's a couple of fruit on there, but uh, you can see the tree it looks like it's just decimated. It probably has some kind of fungal root root rod or something like that. At least that's what I was looking up. Um, apple tree over here is uh, doing okay. These are my hazelnuts doing well as doing well again this is the other apple tree that got bitten by the aminal I don't like those aminals um, but it's struggling to come back so we'll see if it, it it does its job I don't know we did some other planting we dropped a, a couple of more melons and or squash down in here uh, one didn't make it oh, and the other one's kind of still struggling a little bit but that was a smaller plant my lupins are absolutely going crazy. They are huge. And my garlic is doing well. My grapes really come back this year, except for the one. This is my strawberries. I know I'm really behind in the weeding on it, but there is some berries there starting out. They had some nice flowers this year. Uh, there's some in there yeah it's possible I might get a couple but those are my strawberries and then right to the right of that I have a couple of blueberries on this one here um, they're still still coming around again we put some pumpkins in here straw uh, watermelon pumpkin squash uh, yeah there's just a mix of everything in there and I wanted to show you my cold hardy kiwi which is right here and it already has some fruit set on it as well so if you can see that uh, kind of right there see that little berry there so yeah so that's going okay too and it's coming back thank god More squash a couple of plants So here we're at the Red Delicious and the Yellow Delicious Guild. There's definitely some fruit sets in there, as you can see. And it's doing all right for a one-year-old tree. Well, I got it a year ago, last summer. It's doing all right. So 
So then I have this other tree, which is the yellow delicious down here. Of course, I got my peppers all in, along that line there, and I still want to put something in the front here, right in the front part of this gate. This would be the south side. Then, uh, yeah, look at our other delicious. Let's see how we're doing here. Any fruit set on there? Oh, yeah, there's, there's one or two in there. Not as much as the other one, but I'm sure she'll do okay. It's still early. And then this one here is, and I always forget what this is. I believe this is my Josta berry, but it could be my Saskatoon berry. Um, as you can see, this thing's got all these little berries on them and they're delicious. They're super sweet. So right next to the uh, Saskatoon berry, there is the, uh, I think I believe I have the peach here, which is kind of struggling a bit. Um, but some, I got some fruit set on it, which I think is funny. For a tree that's struggling and it's not that old and then beside it i have the apricot which is struggling again another struggler i'm just gonna let them struggle until I, if i can figure something out i will if you know something leave it down in the comments for me i definitely like to take a look at it right here is my a gooseberry which it is just it is just full of gooseberries this one here and this is one of my favorite ones the biggest one and my cherry here kind of came back last year, but it's again struggling on such a skinny stalk. But there is a cherry growing on it, so you know, how can I say it's doing bad when it's giving me fruit? So we'll see how that one makes out. And then again, I have another uh, another gooseberry here, but it's not uh, producing as much right now. I think it'll probably do more next year. It's a different variety, I believe. I couldn't tell you which varieties I have. I was very bad at labeling stuff. And then I have right here is a little blackberry. I believe this is a blackberry that I'm just waiting for it to come back out. Uh, not too many fruit sets there, barely any. So that there is a current. I think that's my uh, black current. And I, this here is my red current. And they came back. They were, I showed you pictures on my last other videos. They were, they were struggling. And then this one here was also struggling, which is the white one. Um, it came back and then it wanted to die again. So with any luck, it'll still come back again. But we'll see. But here's the uh, planting that we did. We got some, a lot of tomatoes in here. The cherries in the front. I think we got a couple other uh, tomatoes in the back. I got a pepper or two, a couple squash. I kind of mixed it up with everything because and again I forgot to label stuff so it's what grows grows it's gonna be a surprise to me and that's just as fine the uh, radishes I grew from seed here have already come up as you can see peppers are still alive still doing well um, but the other seeds are having a harder time coming up in this drier drier dirt so it's hard to, to say um, what's gonna happen here but again, these are radishes as well. Different type of radish. Um, I believe I have some in the last bin there. I have plenty of other plants I can put in. I just keep finding spots to do it. But here, something's growing in here too. And I think those might be habanero or jal uh, jalapeno, jalapeno. There's some... Uh, peppers too as well they're still doing well this is another uh, this is my Fuji apple um, again uh, I think it's slow on the fruit set here but I may not get some this year there's it looks like there's some there anyway it's very small and then down here I got another blackberry which has a couple of berries on it so it's nice to see them Keep getting bigger and bigger can't wait till i have like a giant bush here just really established as a mother to take clones from and then again i got another apricot once again over here by the hascap guild um it's just giving me a hard time the elderberry's doing just fine though this is the other elderberry and this one here is my peach i believe but this one here you know what yeah this is a peach this is giving me like big fruit here Lots of fruit in there. It's doing well. I don't see a lot of damage. 
couple of yellow leaves no peach leaf curl though yet so I think I you know I do that again this year and keep up with it twice a year once at the end of the summer or into the fall and then once in the spring early spring before the buds come out and here's my plum this is Santa Rosa plum and it's got some plums growing on it already too again these are only a year old so I I did good going to Chardulo's um, Ed, Ed Chardulo's they're out on Mount Hope now um, yeah he did good he get, got me some good good rootstock trees um, unfortunately the apricots I don't believe are anything to do with him it's just something to do with my ground and then I have my tomatoes here that my brother and I put in we had a couple extra from my mom's garden uh, my mom my mom uses miracle Girl, whereas I don't use any type of fertilizer at all unless it's worm tea or banana juice or just rainwater or pond water but that's uh, yeah that too and then we have uh, I believe this is what is this one I have to check sometimes oh, what have we got here I, I can't remember if this is a peach I'm pretty sure this might be a peach or oh no this is my Stella cherry what am I thinking it just looks better but uh, yeah no no real cherries on there this year maybe next year if it, it survives um, and then here's my favorite nectarine tree here now we're kind of back to the same guild but there's definitely fruit in there a little leaf curl there I'm gonna rip off and not touch that tree again but yeah I got some fruit right there already look at the color on it already that's neat but yeah there's some nice fruit on here this is gonna be a nice nice tree if she survives and can handle the roots getting a nice good root system going but i like it that's one of my favorite now we just got to go down towards the uh the main pear and that's my last of my fruit that i put in my asparagus is doing uh pretty good i could probably grab a couple spears right there I'm gonna let it all go to seed though because I really want this to really flush out with uh, asparagus and I may even look into uh, doing some more seedlings this, this year or this coming year because uh, yeah I like this asparagus tastes really good um, this walnut tree I haven't decided I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to take this walnut tree out it's too close to this pear tree and this pear tree needs a very hard prune just like in one of my other videos there I, I, I uh, hard pruned this tree right here and I'll just zoom in on that see I hard pruned that tree it was as big as the one beside it and uh, it's doing just well really well it's coming back it's got fruit on it and uh, let's go down and take a closer look so this is my first Santa Rosa plum I really like black plums especially when they're off the tree just like any apple I like them off the tree but I got mega fruit sets all over this little baby and it's so again one year old this uh, this fruit food forest only started last uh, before last summer which was in the winter time when I was just clearing out a lot of bush and stuff making room for the trees and or cleaning up the ground so I'm not driving over stumps and whatnot so here we got our our sweet cherry is doing well it's nice and lush I like that it's lush even if I don't get fruit on it this year that's totally fine I don't see any fruit on it this year um, then I got my other plum this is the other plum I always bought them in twos she's uh, struggling just a little bit she's not quite the same she has smaller leaves um, but again if she lushes out she's she's just as good so and then we got my other cherry again I had two cherries and this uh, again no fruit on this one this year so I would assume when I got them they were probably roughly two years whereas some of the other ones I was getting are three years and that's why this year would be the fourth and or third and that's why I'm getting fruit on some and not others and then this is my granny Smith which I don't remember it being leaning like that uh, looks like I lost a branch of some sort but uh, I definitely got some apples on it that's for sure lots of fruit set lots of fruit sets so I'm very happy that I got some fruit set this year I get a good look at what what might produce 
I have a feeling these branches are going to break though because there's so much weight so I may not just I might not even collect the fruit off it this year I'll just take it off and uh, shape the tree a little bit more so that it can be a lot stronger and then we're back to the uh, hard pruned pear pear that I did in the winter time you can see the water sprouts are coming out like crazy on it which is okay that's fine we'll cut them off again later on it still has fruit on the set like there's still lots of sets um, I probably won't get as much this year obviously because you know fruit only only grows on second year wood so I cut off a lot of that first year wood and it's probably gonna be a lot harder for them to uh, get fruit sets so uh, then there's this one on the side which was right beside it which I'm again I'm gonna have to take this one down as well because being too high like that when it's that tall like that's tall it's got to be a good you know 35 feet and I said I, I can't reach anything up there so there's really no point of having it down there so I'll start doing this like where the branches start to umbrella a bit and I'll start keeping that and I'll train some of the other uh, <clears throat> water sprouts to grow off the side so that I can get smaller canopy uh, canopy branches and then uh, down here uh, this was dying and then it sprouted out some leaves so I just took off the dead and I'm gonna let her grow and see what happens that's a peach and the cherry that was coming back I saw there was a leaf on it doesn't have a leaf on it anymore so I still have high hopes that these buds might burst out into something but they look a little brown but uh, we'll let her go and see what happens again we'll be having a lot of lux in some of this area this is a very wet area down here this is where all the water runs down to the almost the lowest point and then down into the creek So we call this the pumpkin patch, but pretty much anything that has a squash or watermelon or something that needs a lot of water because this ground has a lot of saturated water from the being so close to that creek. And it's right there. It's only like a couple of feet away from the actual start of the bed. But I checked underneath. On the top it seems really dry, but underneath it's quite moist. Uh, you can see some of the yellowing of the leaves. It's a sure indicator that it's getting too much water. But uh, We'll keep an eye on it, make sure that they're all getting done. We, my brother and I were down here the other day and we added, um, oh, I don't know, a whole bunch of watermelon, good 10 more watermelon, um, looking for good places to put them. We tried a hard time getting straw this year for cover because it's just hard to find. People are not uh, growing as much, I guess, or selling it for really expensive prices. But we got the giant pumpkins, regular pumpkins, and I'm, I know I have some squash in here somewhere. I just don't know which ones that are. Uh, and then what we did is we have this other bed because remember I had two. Um, this is the other watermelon bed supposed to be, but I couldn't get to it and I didn't have enough to fill it or even orders to sell it. So we came in here and where the sticks are, we put in a little plant there and we thought we'd see what would happen if we didn't cover it with uh, straw. So that's covered. So this isn't covered with straw, and on this side it is. So a little experiment. We'll see how that works out too, and I'll definitely do an update on that later on in the season. Well, this is my uh, black mulberry bush or tree. Um, there's one here, and it's doing well. It's coming back nicely. Um, again, we've had some casualties over the seasons, um, not by my own choice. But uh, yeah, there's another one down here at the other end, doing just as well. And uh, yeah, I can't wait for mulberries to grow, but we're looking at another seven, eight years before I see mulberries. <laughs> of course, I have my black walnuts that uh, in previous videos I've always kind of cleaned up, trimmed or pruned, but I didn't want to get rid of them. I'm not going to get rid of 10 years worth of growth um, unless it becomes a nuisance or gets in the way of something else growing. But uh, they put out a nut and it is food. You can't eat black walnuts. So uh, if I, when I find a, a vendor or something like that, I may just as keep, I might very well just sell them. But uh, until then I just kind of store them away. 
Um, that's just a ornamental red berry tree. Even the birds don't eat that stuff. This is my crab apple tree, which does very well every year. I did a little prune on a little while ago and they just do great. So definitely prune your trees. If you wanna see vigorous growth, And we're just coming up to the pond now, which is uh, doing well. Again, I haven't seen any fish in a while. <laughs> I don't know if they're just hiding under, under the water. Um, I'm not really sure. I have seen like thousands of polywogs, little tadpoles and yeah. But my iris is up and my lilies came back, which I was a little worried my lilies weren't going to be buried. Uh, they weren't deep enough in the water to uh, come back, but it's definitely coming back. So there they are, a whole bunch of them. So there's a good chance I might even see a, a nice lily this year. Um, and then we're over here to my other, this is the pond guild over here. This is where I had a fig tree that died. Again, my lupins doing really well, good nitrogen fixer. You should have them everywhere. They're easy to grow too. It's ridiculous how easy they are to grow. There's my hazcap right there. One of them. Um, it's got some fruit on it too. This is my pawpaw right here. So I got two uh, two nitrogen fixers right beside each other, right around my pawpaw. And then I have another pawpaw here because you need them. You need a pair, otherwise they won't cross pollinate. Um, so I have that. And I do have another hazcap right here that's been wounded more than once uh, from people not knowing where they are. But I will mark that soon enough so people will stop hitting it. Um, yeah, some of my flowers are dying, other flowers are coming up. Pond's doing well and holding water, saturating that ground nice. Um, yeah, so if you like my videos, like don't forget to hit that thumbs up down there and uh, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, if you got any questions or anything like that, don't forget to comment down below. I always like having little chats and uh, maybe I'm just not uh, describing what I'm doing here as much. I'm in zone 6B, which I always forget to tell everybody. But uh, Southern Ontario and the food forest is looking quite splendid. So these here are my goji berries. I have two, two here. Um, they do well. They actually produced last year. Kind of tastes a little bit like tomato skin. Um, yeah, they grow nice and wide. Again, it's all about learning how to propagate and getting that uh, greenhouse up so that I have a place to put things that'll stay warm enough to actually allow the, uh, the rooting uh, to, to begin or to happen so that I can a lot of decent plants off of ones I already have. This is another gooseberry here. It's uh, It's got some gooseberries on there, definitely lots. Nice big fruit set. Nice to see them when they get really big, like a nice big bush of that. Um, but there's that. And then just over here is my a couple of my blueberries, which are also fruiting. You can see I got a ton of blueberries on this one. Just a little bush though. And this guy here is doing over, doing okay. He's going a little taller, um, but I definitely want to get more blueberries in here for sure. So these are two of my maple trees that I grabbed last uh, fall from my cousin's place, and uh, man, they're already a, a good foot or two taller than they were. And it'd be nice to know that all of the ones that I put in have survived. There's one right there, a white sheath on it. But yeah, they have all, all the maples survived that I put in. So I found that my method and the timing that I used uh, probably was pretty good for successful transplanting of maple trees. So as you can see, we're at the center of the property on the uh, pear tree. I've done a few prunes on this. And the fruit set on here is ridiculous. Like, it's like, I don't know two per every half half inch you know like it's all the way down each branch up top all around 
So definitely, if I wanted to get really good fruit, I'd thin some of this out, which I probably will do later. So you can see, look, even on some of the weaker branches, I got tons and tons of fruit. Tons of fruit this year on that. Um, but over here, I definitely got to get back in there and cut out some dead. Just behind this branch right here, there's some dead in there. It's that center pole, or this center branch right here. This one, this whole one right here has to come out. And that'll open this right up, and then I'll cut it down a little bit. Hard prune. I'm going to hard prune everything this winter. And then, uh, yeah, we'll be going from there. But I'll leave you there. And I hope you had a great weekend, and we'll see you next week.